Welcome to Bit by Bit, a series where we highlight one thing you can do to optimize and potentially run a bit better in Google Cloud. Today's topic, making sure we're more efficient with resources in our GKE standard clusters. One way to do that is by configuring the cluster autoscaler in GKE with the optimized utilization autoscaling profile. Let's get to it. The Kubernetes Cluster Autoscaler is the gold standard for making sure your cluster can add or remove nodes based on demand. And my favorite thing about the Cluster Autoscaler in GKE is that Google fully manages the software. It's one less cluster component lifecycle that we have to worry about. So in this demo, we're going to use these two clusters, each with Cluster Autoscaler enabled, but with one main difference. In GKE, the way you influence this fully managed Cluster Autoscaler is by configuring autoscaling profiles. These inform the Cluster Autoscaler's behavior. So the default autoscaling profile is set here in our California GKE cluster. It's called balanced. This means it prioritizes keeping more resources readily available for incoming pods. Our Oregon cluster, on the other hand, has a different autoscaling profile called optimized utilization. This makes the cluster autoscaler scale down nodes more aggressively to be more resource efficient. So we're going to run an experiment to see the difference between these two clusters and um, their respective autoscaling profiles. So we can see here that they have the same node count and they have the same amount of CPU and memory. And we can use the uh, kubectl command line tool to check in on them and make sure that they are also running uh, the same workload. So we can see California is running a deployment called Alpha with 45 pods. And we're now going to use kubectx to switch over to the Oregon cluster. You can see that it's running the same deployment, same number of pods. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to delete the workload or this deployment in each of them and watch how the Oregon GKE cluster scales down more aggressively than the California GKE cluster with the default auto scaling profile. So we're going to delete the deployment in the Oregon cluster, switch context to our California cluster, and then delete the deployment uh, there as well. And so that'll take a moment. So in the meantime, let's take a look at previous scale down experiments I ran before this demo in our cluster autoscaler logs. So even though the cluster autoscaler in GKE is a fully managed component, it is nice to have its logs automatically sent to cloud logging for us. And so in our logs explorer here, I have two saved queries one for each of the GKE clusters in this demo to give us insights into scale down events that happen in each cluster. So let's jump into the query for the Oregon cluster with the optimized utilization profile. And so I won't get bogged down in query syntax, but you'll see here that we're uh, looking for logs from the autoscaler uh, for our Oregon cluster uh, and its only node pool. And we're specifically looking for scale down events in this cluster that happened when the ratio of requests from pods running on a node that was scaled down to its total allocatable resources was over 50%. This signals a more aggressive scale down of nodes um, that might have less spare allocatable resources, but spare resources nonetheless. And so we see here in many cases, Cluster Autoscaler did make a decision to scale down these nodes. And if we dig down into one of the individual scale down events, we can see this information. So if we click down in here and we take a look at the individual node, uh, we see that the memory request to total allocatable ratio for this node that was scaled down was at 60%. Now keep in mind, Cluster Autoscaler will only scale down a node if it knows that it can schedule the pods running on that node to another node in the cluster. But of course, there's still the trade-off that if you turn down more nodes, the workloads on those nodes are evicted and have to restart elsewhere. So in this case, we had three that were on this node that was scaled down. So this is when choosing an auto-scaling profile becomes a trade-off of efficient resource utilization uh, versus how tolerant your workloads actually are of di potential disruption. And so now we're gonna run the exact same query uh, in the California GK cluster uh, with the balanced auto-scaling profile. We're actually not gonna get any scale down events over the, the same time window. Right, and then the reason that this is occurring is that more often than with the optimized utilization profile, the balanced profile is um, preferring to keep resources readily available for incoming pods as opposed to aggressive scale down. And so now we'll jump back to our original demo and we can see that the expected behavior has occurred. 
we can see that the Oregon GKE cluster with the optimized utilization cluster autoscaling profile has scaled down more aggressively than the California GKE cluster with the balanced uh, cluster autoscaler autoscaling profile. And so, you know, when it comes to resource efficiency, uh, scale down efficiency is a big part of it. But uh, there's also optimizations that we can have at scheduling time to make sure that of the spare resources on our nodes, that we use them, um, that we use them all, right? So when you take a look at the Oregon cluster with the optimized utilization profile, you can see that we have two nodes and we'll look at the node with the suffix H02A. And we can see that CPU, it has uh, more CPU requests than the other node and about, you know, it's about a wash for uh, memory requests. And so when it comes to utilizing the optimized utilization profile, uh, let's take a look at how this pod will get scheduled here. So we have a pod requesting 100 millicore of CPU. Um, and so what we would expect with the optimized utilization profile is that this would actually land on the H02A nodes. We're gonna, we just applied it, we created it, and we should see that it was scheduled to that node. And so the reason that it gets scheduled to this node is that when you use this uh, optimized utilization profile, uh, it's influencing the kube scheduler to place these nodes on more heavily utilized nodes um, to make sure again that all those spare capacity that sometimes can be left idle, that we're actually um, taking advantage of it and using it when we can. And so it prefers to schedule node pods to these nodes that again are more heavily utilized. And so the way that it actually influences the cube scheduler is that when you enable this feature or this auto scaling profile on a GKE cluster, uh, we will then inject this uh, scheduler name, GKE Optimized Utilization Scheduler, uh, to basically influence the cube scheduler to perform this behavior at scheduling time as well. Scaling down nodes more aggressively and scheduling workloads so that we get the most from our nodes can make things a bit better with resource efficiency in GKE. So, check out the optimized utilization auto scaling profile. As always, you can learn more in the links in the description below, and we'll see you in a bit.